Keefe was like really rich. Like Fink and Keefe, you know, yeah. I don't mean throw the name out, but these is really had the richest neighborhood in Compton when was growing up. Like hip hop is America's last hope. Mm -hmm. If I was a politician, cause that really would be my tagline. What's up, bro? It's your boy Big Court on the Holding Court podcast. What's going on with your producer Ken? Man, we got a we got a, a good one today, bro. L.A. Legend. Oh L yeah, L.A. Legend sure. in the East house. Side too. East Side. East Side Legend. East Side. East Side Legend. Yeah. Somewhat on the West Specifically. Side. Specifically, <laughs> yeah, I'm from Sacramento, so I just it's L.A. To all me, good, baby. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I'm from K.C., so you know it's yeah. all good. So we got the homie Glasses Malone. What's good with you, fam? Man, I'm cooling, man. We finally here. We've been talking about doing this shit for a year. Nah, we have, we have. Yeah. And I gotta properly uh, you know, introduce your homie. We got the homie Joey here too. Joey Westside, man. man. Joey LA Giants, man. What's good with you, fam? He, I didn't man. think he was gonna come. <laughs> man, I made it, man. I made it, man. By the grace of God. What's happening though? <laughs> Joey Westside, on? LA What's Giants. Happy to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. So Joey Westside, where what where, where you from? You from the West Side. Yeah, yeah. I'm from South Central Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's yep. what's up. Normie. You know? <laughs> 78. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. All yep. right. That's when right. We started you know. the rides over oh, ignorant. <laughs> Tripping. So good. You know what I mean? Tripping. We, we met it with love. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I was hey. little, though. I yeah. Was little. I was a kid. Well, he yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. Y'all both born and raised in LA? Born and raised, Compton and Watts my whole life. Oh, okay. Yeah. Compton yeah. and Watts. And you born and raised yeah. in LA? Yeah. All right. What's it like for you, Glasses? Fun. Yeah. A lot of fun, man. Um, you don't realize you're poor to somebody tell you. Mm hmm. Now, that's how much fun you have. And I wasn't as poor as some people, but you just have a lot of fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, there's some traumatic times, but for the most part, it's fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can see what human beings can, you know, you can, in, all kind of shit you can innovate when you don't got some other shit. Yeah. You make it work anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I had a lot of fun. Okay. All right. Well, shit. People know your story, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It, we, that's already well established. Yeah. Uh, I just want to get right into it, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk to me. It's a lot going on with uh, Tupac, yeah. you know, in that case, it's it's reemerged uh, with the, the brother Keefy D. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn. Damn. So, you know, <laughs> This nigga D. do the best Keefy D too. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oh, you do a, a Keefy D impression? Well, I just like when, he be cussing that, I like when he be cussing that nigga Boosie out, man. That shit be funny as a motherfucker yeah. when he get mad at yeah. Boosie. Go, what, call him like, ashy and shit. Yeah. Oh, ashy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that shit be Boosie. hilarious, man. <laughs> Hell, he be cussing that nigga Boosie out, he man. He be bad at Boosie. And then think about it, nigga Boosie said, yeah, I do be ashy. <laughs> yeah. That sound like some Boosie But uh, shit uh, Tupac must die, brother. You know, you was all over this topic. A little while ago, and um, you caused a lot of waves, sure. a lot of waves with that. Sure. Um, let let's revisit that for a second. What was the the concept? What was the the thought process with the Tupac must die? Honestly, um, I started to understand what hip hop was and what my job was as a hip hop artist. Mm. My job was to voice the streets' perspective, street urban culture. Los Angeles, like I'm super vested in our street urban culture, right? Uh, gang banging, like I understand the morality, I understand the fashion, I understand everything about it. And morality, morality was one of those things that we hadn't talked about. So I wanted to tell the, as I started to understand it more further and further, I was like, yo, I know what to do now. Like now I know how to tell a gangster rap story that the whole world has to contend with. Like I know what to do. I needed to voice the streets perspective in a situation that the world knows what happened, but don't know that it came from, or don't understand it's a street perspective to it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when I was working on it, I was thinking, I was like, damn, Tupac is so mainstream now. I remember Tupac was so underground my whole life. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, Tupac was like the guy cause that my, your mom would buy his CD for you. Because he was going to say some cool shit. It wasn't going to be over the top. And he was like this underground guy's films, you know, where only we went to, so, you know, you couldn't talk at middle school. It wasn't that motherfucking, you know, white folks going to see Pac like, you know, Juice or none of that shit. It just wasn't happening. It was our thing. Mm -hmm. So now I look at his legacy. At that time I was looking, I was like, damn, like it's white people who be like, they put Tupac on their little name, Tupac Ben, you know, Tupac Billy. Mm -hmm. Like some guy that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? And his spirit has infected everybody, like, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Crazy. So 
I knew at that point he belonged to the whole world and no longer just ours. And I was like, damn, this situation was, there's a street perspective that I could explain and make sense out of it because this is what I know. Um, it was two ideas. It was that one or, ironically, I had to wrote a song called Any White Man to Do, and it was about uh, the riots, how the riots started, because it was started by some gang members. Mm -hmm. But when I finished Tupac Must Die, like when I wrote the song and I heard it and I could see the visual, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, this got to be the one. Mm -hmm. This got to be the one. Um, you weren't apprehensive about doing it? Sure, like, yeah, but, you know. Was it was it helped out that the Keefe D? Because when did the Keefe D interview come out? With Vlad. With Vlad, was it? Because I think uh, people who were in the know were in the know, but no one really talked about it until that. Well, actually, we all knew. Everybody, I mean, but I'm saying on a national level. No, 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 level. no, yeah. Everybody in LA street urban culture knew what happened. The first day. Yeah. Yeah. In fairness, you know what I mean? We heard, yeah. like, the calls came back, like, oh, the, the mobs, Pac and the mob jumped over <clears throat> yeah. Baby Lane. So when Pac got shot, you know, we- Put two and two, two It's together. easy. That's yeah. normal. Yeah. Normal bit business as usual. Um, so we always talked about it around mm -hmm. our way. You know, that became part of the rhetoric. Like, yeah, you keep playing, you know what I mean? You know how this shit goes. So. Yeah. When I made the song, so the most important thing is when T died, the the, the guy that was driving the car. Mm -hmm. He got killed that, um, in front of a dispensary and some crazy shit. So Dre, who was my man and booked me for my fourth concert ever, he passed away. Baby Lane passed away back when I was in high school still. But Dre was like a health issue? Yeah. Yeah. But it was like some crazy yeah. shit they was talking about at that time. And yeah. you were close with Dre? Yeah. Like, okay. As much as you could be close with somebody from another community, he right. booked me for my first few shows. He supported right. my first CD. My fourth show, I performed at a thing that the South Sides do in Compton, and the man just called Lane Day. Yeah. Where they celebrate Baby Lane every year. Wow. Wow. Just being a real rider, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I performed at Lane Day back in 2005. Let me ask you this, yeah. um, because I've always heard conflicting things about Big Dre. Sure. So you have people that say, that he wasn't like that, and then you got people to say he was like that. Yeah. You know, you hear that he was a basketball star and you know he was a good guy. Yeah. Then you hear that other side. Which one of those, if you can say, is is they all the same person to me. Okay. I think everybody from the street urban lifestyle is like Dale Dog has a horrible reputation or you know, has a fearsome reputation. Big U has a fearsome reputation. Mm -hmm. Them niggas are great guys. I mean, right. listen, we, it's like we a from duality a, to it. Yeah. Not even, is it really wrong to, to get, to seek justice and somebody wrong some of your friends? Nah, but you know, you know, like I know though, everybody in the hood can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's certain guys that, yeah, you know, he ain't going to do shit. Him, he'll fight. He ain't going to shoot though. Him, oh yeah, he going to go all the way. You know what I'm saying? But so, I never looked at one worse than the other. No, I'm not saying that worse. No, 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 no. I'm just I'm saying, saying so. I, I'm sure Dre is the kind of person. I, I, you had already heard stories of Dre doing shit. Like okay. it was kind of all That's well. That's what I was asking. Yeah, it was okay. already well documented. Okay. You know, he didn't solve some issues. Okay. okay. Same thing for Baby Lane. Keefe was rich. You know, it's crazy yeah. because along these conversations, that's being lost. Mm -hmm. Like you're not used to seeing this kind of kind of action from certain people, but yeah. Keefe was like really rich. Like thinking yeah. Keefe, you know, yeah. I'm gonna throw the nigga name out, but. These niggas really had the richest neighborhood in Compton when we was growing up. Mm -hmm. that, and it's because of them. Uh, it's but not, I don't, nobody's refuted that, though. Everybody no. has said that Keefe was the guy. But yeah. somewhere along the line in mainstream mm -hmm. consumption, yeah. it's like he's this broken person yeah. that needed to yeah. take advantage of somebody or jump on somebody right. versus them just getting justice for something that happened right. and protect the reputation. Right. But as far as Dre, Dre always had a... He always had a player reputation. Okay. You know, he'd get busy. You you heard the same stories, yeah. but he dealt with everything very yes. amicably. You know right. what I'm saying? He was a, he was a hell of a diplomat. He okay. wasn't like no um no crash out. He wasn't a torpedo. Yeah, like yeah. That. He yeah. he wasn't okay, I see what you're saying. Kind of like yeah. solve violence first. Yeah. Nah, he could figure out multiple ways. He was a really mm -hmm. smart dude. Yeah. Well, and and not saying that, but just saying that because uh, I had two totally contrasting different descriptions of him sure. you have people that just say nah he wasn't like that nah he played basketball he, like as if he was just a square you know what i mean nah, then i heard no motherfucker square okay that's why i asked nah, that nigga that's was why hustling i, asked. I, I would yeah. imagine he was hustling i mean i don't know if it's you know these are well documented facts if you really was 
you know, outside yeah. playing, fucking yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was a good dude, you know right. what I mean? Like, right. Um, the niggas that I know that fuck with Baby Lane, they say he was a good dude, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just not LA shit or like yeah. any other ghetto. Yeah. You got to protect your reputation and yeah. motherfuckers going to do that with everything they got. So when you did the Tupac Must Die, you received a lot of backlash. A ton. Yeah. Is it's that what you expected? Back. Yeah. At that point, I had um sized up like creating real in, like hip hop, real gangster rap. I was finna get fucked the police. Mm-hmm. I was gonna get fucked the police. Yeah. Same thing that happened in in WA when they made. I told Joey, I was like, "Yo, it's gonna be like when them niggas made fuck the police." Mm -hmm. Today is looked at completely different. Right. You know, at that time, everybody was against it. Black churches was against it. Everybody was disowning them. It was fucked up. Yeah. You know, and then years later, it started to make sense. Did you receive like any real backlash, like like yeah. threats and shit like Hell that? Yeah. I mean. Not no real, real, real threats. Yeah. There were some real situations. You know, yeah. motherfuckers called me and, oh man, you know, I felt some kind of way. I'm like, nigga, everybody and their mama done told the fucking story. Cause like, how you gonna get at me? Right. And that shit make me, that made me mad. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? I didn't tell the story any differently or nothing. I just explained how it go. And it's like, almost like people got mad that they felt I was creating a level of sympathy or understanding for the, the right. predicament that Baby Lane was in the right. whole time. Yeah. I thought it was creative, though. I thought, I'm going to be honest with you, on one hand, I thought it was career suicide. Sure. You know what I mean? But on, this, on the other hand, I could appreciate the artistry and the creativity of it. You know, because one thing you had said, I remember watching you on The Breakfast Club, and you was like, and, and it was, and, and I, I remember being at this community thing in Kansas City in my hometown, and it was this thing, it was this it was this stop the violence thing, you know, and how we gonna curb the violence. And I'm doing my part on the panel. Matter of fact, Seth Shakur was there, oh, right? No. It was her and Ray Love and myself. Um, but one of the niggas stood up in the crowd and he said, I hear that. He said, I hear everything y'all saying. He said, but what about the, the, the perpetrators? What about us? You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, I done done some shit, but I'm trying to get it together. He was like, but I don't got no car. You know, I got to keep a gun with me because, but you know, the people I didn't, you know, uh, got into it with, they don't care about me changing my life. So how am I supposed to move around? Like help me too, help the perpetrator. Sure. And so I never thought about that. And it was crazy when he said that because one Man, of the police officers, shit. one of the detectives went over there to him and was like, bro, what you need? I hear that, you know, like you right. You know what I mean? What you need? So when you did that, it made me think about that. Like, damn, that is true. Nobody ever, you know, considered Baby Lane's position and and what he, you know, not saying, not justifying what he did it's by not, no yeah, means, yeah. right? It's not. But, it's not. It's not. That's what make that specific street urban culture morality unique. Mm -hmm. This is not the traditional right. thing in regular right. America. This is. Mm -hmm only in our ghettos, yeah. not even just in Los Angeles. If you, I'd have been to KC a lot of times. You yeah. jump the wrong nigga KC, you'll get your oh, for shit. Sure. You didn't fuck with some of my you. niggas in KC. Tons. Yeah. Tons. Yeah. <laughs> but still thought it was career suicide too. He was, I, I remember he was, we sitting at the table, he was like, fuck. I'm like, oh trip, man, we good. Yeah. Like, none of these niggas didn't that, make man? me. Do you got a name it that? <laughs> yeah. That became a big conversation <laughs> because, yeah. Uh, Mob James used to be like, oh, with a name. And I'm like, well, when I was thinking of the name, I was thinking like Shakespearean, like poetic. Yeah. Like Tupac Romeo must, must die. die. Yeah, or yeah. John Tucker must die. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's not how you would say it in the streets. Like if Steel wronged me and shit, I'm not going to be like, Steel must die. It just sound like a corny <laughs> film. <laughs> you mean? But somehow I think mainstream America heard that. They was like, oh, you, the title. And I'm like, that's not how we would say yeah. You know, I can see if the name of the song was Fuck Tupac or, yeah, yeah. cause that's really the mentality at that. Yeah. Oh, this nigga to jump, fuck that nigga. Yeah. But it was like, I did it extra Shakespearean and the nigga still was like, man, you could have changed the title. So let me, did it translate? Did, did the, did people get it? Did they receive it? Every so, at day. least some. Every, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people got it. Mm -hmm. um, it was mainly people from this thing of ours though. From, from You know what's funny? It, no, it was, so it was uh, obviously none of us. Mm -hmm. Nobody came from our life call. They, mm -hmm. they was like, yeah, that's, you fuck, that's hard. Yeah. Now you start getting the mainstream America, you know, where the income start being 50,000 and higher, <laughs> you know what I mean? Then they, yeah. that was the people tripping. Yeah. But the people who also was over a quarter million a year, they was like, 
they was tapping in like, mm -hmm. I got some crazy tap ins like, hey, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. That's really what happened? I'm like, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, that's hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so with that being said, with all the speculation that's going on now, you know, because now, I mean, it was already out in the open, but sure. now it's it's reemerged, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you do you believe what's out there and what is Keefe telling the truth in your opinion? No, Keefe, I don't believe. Oh, I've been I said this uh, once or twice. There's no way them niggas would have let nobody owe them a million dollars. Mm -hmm. It's just not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen. Right. So you think in terms of well, well, the part I was asking about is how he's saying it happened. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I, I never really heard. What's crazy is I never heard Keefe tell a story. Oh, okay. Like I know the story from Dre. Ah, okay. like in a regular conversation. All right. Well, I ain't um, even gonna ask you that. But oh, you you saw it. You saw what I heard. You know what I mean, I didn't. I didn't give it to nobody. No different than I heard it. Oh, I didn't have okay. to hold nothing back. To, oh, so right. the music, so the music video is from the Dre perspective. No, it's from Baby Lane's perspective, but it's from like somebody who was explaining to me how it happened. That was there. Yeah, and then me understanding the emotions because they obviously right. he didn't use the emotions, but I know every emotion being in the predicament. Okay, so why is so? What's the play then with with Keefy trying to switch? Who is you know what I'm saying? Because now he's trying to put it on Dre. I don't know. Maybe his family mad. I mean, I'm for sure. Baby Lane family was mad when I put out like his. Yeah. I think he had a kid. Yeah. His kid's daughter was mad. So. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I think maybe they might find shame on their family. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I never asked. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there shouldn't be any thoughts of shame or anything. I don't give a fuck what nobody said about no fucking rapper. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is a life that we got to survive, and our reputation is how we survive. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do the same thing now, but the predicament he was in, that's nine times out of 10, how you have to respond. Yeah. Might I dare ask this question, just hypothetically, good. right? And um, I know the comments, ooh, I'm probably gonna catch some heat. <laughs> Would you have done the same thing with Nip? No, nah, because Nip was still in the streets every day. So mm -hmm. I'd be telling two street stories. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't also talk about no other two street dudes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, But I'm saying, if if you know from that artistry standpoint, right? Of, I mean, you know, it, it would have to be twenty years or something. Nip would have to ascend into that status with Pac has, where it's mm -hmm. like that. But uh, I I don't think none of us really know what happened. Mm -hmm. Like um, maybe if somebody knew, I, I was just talking about this as well. Like I would love to hear like a, uh, like a um the idea from like what happened with a P and B Rock. Yeah. That to me, that's closer to what I would want to hear when somebody's voice in the streets. Nip and what happened with Nip and his situation, them is his homeboys and they both from the street and some mm -hmm. shit happened between two street dudes, two yeah. dudes who even knew each other. Right. So it kind of becomes not as simple as me expressing a street perspective. Versus how how not though? I mean, you you said, I mean, what different, I mean, I understand Pac wasn't yeah. street like that, but. Well, of course he was, but Tupac but also I'm saying was what. A, yeah, what? yeah, but he's a multi-platinum, yeah, rapper, right? Who was right then at that time, three or four times platinum. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, three, four movies down. Yeah, number one rapper in the game. That's you but know, that, but that don't matter. The rules, the shit, the street shit still apply. The rules still apply. But that's what I'm saying. It's like. It's like the equivalent of somebody that's not in the life mm -hmm. with somebody in the life. But what's the difference, though? I'm saying Nip the, is in the life, but the same rules. Apply, you that's know, that's my saying? point. The so, streets don't care whether you rich, down. famous, whatever. But, but it, Nip is also is not a multi-platinum rapper at oh, this time who is not somebody not from a gang. Mm -hmm. I think I think I get what you're saying. You, you know was mean? explaining that L.A. street culture perspective. Yeah. How the hell do it? That's like me trying to do like a, a version of what like. If I tried to do what, like how gang beef start, it just wouldn't have the same appeal. Okay. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. for Nip's legacy, it's gonna take time to grow into that mm -hmm. kind of deity that like where Tupac or you know, gotcha. Jesus at. Like it's instant around here, but mm -hmm. it may take time. Okay. I mean, but also Nip is a crip, like he's right. a gang member. Right. Fuck the rap, he not, he's not, and he's also not a multi-platinum rapper at that time. I got you. That was in, you know, a hundred million. He sold a hundred million dollars in box office tickets yeah. at the film. No, I got you. Where, where that same pressure, like again, I heard every rumor that everybody else heard, but also right. there's parts of, as a nigga that fuck with a lot of them and yeah. they homeboys too. I never heard the whole story. Right. 
It ain't like it's out there. So you would have to kind of know to me to put yeah. it together. You think it's a you think it's a reach for the whole puffy thing? Because I do. I I, I think that yeah, the puffy yeah. situation. I think was, it made for a really good story. Yeah, but yeah. puffy should be nervous. You think so? Hell yeah. Mm. If okay, so I need to see the discovery obviously on the yeah, case, right? right? But. If anything to do with the story itself that he's telling is mm -hmm. the reason why he's in trouble, that mm -hmm. nigga better get some but, but let's be fair. Like, let's bring it into a real life perspective, right? Especially back then. You know, Puffy shook, right? He shook. These niggas is, is pressing him. These is he really niggas. shook, though? But hold on. It, nah, I think he was. I think he was, right? When he come out this way, right? Sure. So he's, you know, he like, you know how niggas talk. Niggas like, man, this niggas, man, I, man. Nigga, I get a nigga 100,000, nigga, you take care, you know, just talking, just venting, right? Because the thing about it is Keefe and them, when that shit happened, they didn't do it predicated on that. Sure. It was a response to a situation sure. that had nothing to do with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say I feel like it's a reach, you know? And again, let me let me say this too, just disclaimer, because again, I, I you know, I'm cool with Seth. I'm cool with Ray Love and people close to Tupac, so we're yeah, just outlaws, e yeah. E we e just e we just unpacking it, but you know, yeah, I still yeah. have sympathy and love for I the think, family. I think you know I, I, mean? I think along somewhere explaining how gangbanging work and mm -hmm. people feeling like this happened to Tupac that there's some let some there's some sense or lack of empathy for me, mm -hmm. and they that shit's stupid. Everybody right. know there's not no nigga breathing that rap from Los Angeles, especially that was born pre-1995 that don't fuck with Tupac Shakur. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody's empathetic to his death. Mm -hmm. We just understand this. This happens to our fucking friends all the fucking time. Nah, that's real. So it ain't gonna be no sweater or no different than I'm gonna feel the same sadness for my friend that I grew up with that I would feel for Tupac. I'm right. sad, but I understand. I get and it. then just like them, they supposed to be mad at the motherfucker who did it. Yeah. But it's nothing, it shouldn't be a crime in me explaining how it is to be poor and coming up in this life and having to deal with protecting your reputation at all costs. Right, right. That's where I stand with it. So, so you so you think they got action at Puffy at the end of the day? And do you think that Keefe's going to jail? What What's your prediction on that? Right, you know what, I'm gonna shut the fuck, I owe still steak right now. Because okay. I, I, there's no <laughs> way possible you could have told me that 27 years later, even after these interviews, that yeah. they was gonna be able to bring him to court. And still was like, I'm telling you, I got the inside scoop. Him and that nigga going to prison. <laughs> I'm like, man, that nigga ain't finna. How? These man, interviews can't convict. But I think he got action. I think he'll beat that shit. And I don't even think they'll bring Puffy in, bro. I I just so okay. I just don't ever really feel like Bad Boy was under threat from Death Row. That's what I genuinely feel. There's entirely too many motherfucking moments where these niggas bumped into each other and didn't nobody mm -hmm. pinch each other. Yeah. That means somebody's telling niggas to stand down. I mean, that shit happened all day on social media. You got motherfuckers that be going back and forth, funking with each other, but working out the same spot. So, I mean. Hands down. So, so again, it's like. <laughs> it's a fact. That, the fuck is super fucking fact. I was saying that. I was like, <laughs> I wish these niggas just sit at the fucking table. <laughs> God damn. I ain't finna talk about these niggas and give them no prayer. If I ain't talking, this shit dumb. <laughs> Fuck that, it's they fucking business. But for sure, the death row and the, and the bad boy niggas ran into each other enough times could I have a real pro Nobody got pinched. Yeah, but they ran into each other a few times. They had a few little standoffs and, you know, not necessarily skirmishes. Ain't but nobody gonna pinch nobody. Nah, because what? Because I think Reg, I think was it Reg or one of them niggas drew a gun, you know? And ain't nobody did me. nothing. Hey. The niggas, if they if they was both in L.A., it probably would have went down. If they was both in L.A. No, I'm saying if they were stationed in, you know what I'm saying, headquartered. If Bad Boy was headquartered out here, it probably would have went I, down. I'm not buying that. You I'm not buying so. that shit. I think Pac was marketing. He seen Puff marketed off his shit with that fucking, I'm going to say it. I don't give a fuck. Everybody be mad. Kiss my ass. I think Pac seen Puff market, you know, when he got shot. You know, and he made the who shot you, right? He took, excuse me, not he made it, but he released it to take advantage of that situation as a marketing ploy. I think Pac went, when he got in trouble, he said, I'm finna come home and market everything off this shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a level of that with all that, I'm sure. But yeah. I think that's 95%. There's no real issue between them niggas. Mm -hmm. now, now, what's crazy to me is Snoop and Big, that shit was the real issue because them is the niggas that got shot at. 
Them is the niggas that got a situation inside it where Trey D and them shooting a video in New York and them niggas video set get shot at. Yeah, but it's all other little nuances up in there. It wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get what you're saying. I That's mean, a real reason to have a problem. <sighs> No, it's a lot of circumstantial shit there. Course, because think about it. Biggie got on the radio. He said some fly shit. He didn't like, it would have been different if the nigga had a call and sent his niggas. Like, hey man, them niggas over there, y'all go handle that. But he even said some but, fly shit that resulted in something happening to me. Uh, I mean, Doesn't it go back deeper than that though? Because didn't someone get shot at a club with Puff and Suge and everything? I don't think those before. two are mm. together. He talking, talking about, about when the boy from yeah. no, he talking about when the boy from Campanella got killed. Uh, Jake, right? Jake. Yeah, that didn't have nothing to do. Nah, that uh, was. But didn't that start the fuel? Because Puff was there. It might have, and, and but yeah, but it I wasn't. But like... it wasn't. But it wasn't. That was some shit. Big, it's big some other was shit. That was some other right, shit. Some other shit. But yeah. it was something to do. I think with that was it, a broad but, or something. But but again, it's <clears> one of those things where it's like that's the real reason. I I just genuinely think Pac knew what he was doing. He said, "I'm finna this shit finna launch. I'm finna be out of here." He was right. But that's also why he would never let nothing happen to none of the bad boy Nick. You mean to tell me it's no way possible this nigga had got he got he got a bunch of money. He the number one nigga that at that time. <clears throat> number one nigga. Every you got a whole network of gang members that'll do anything to a nigga. Yeah. And you don't get a nigga pinch because you don't want nothing to happen. I mean, but you know, listen, dog, you know that trying to 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 walk that fine line, right? You know, because it's on one hand, like think about it, where you at in your life right now? Sure. You know, let's just say if you had a real issue, you gonna think about it, bro, because you got shit to lose. You in a different space totally than agree. you were twenty, yeah. you know, twenty five years ago, sure. right? Yeah. Twenty years ago, you might have went on ahead and press play, but you know now you gonna try to, you might try to give a little bit of energy to it to maybe get it to go away, but you're not gonna just crash out in behind it. So Man, I think you had to consider a lot of that too. Hell no. Because yeah. the first time he saw a nigga that actually violated one of the niggas that he made friends with, he tripped. Hence, we have a problem. Nah, Every last man, time. You gotta, because I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's I'm a short time period. I mean, the definitely. That's what I'm saying. We're talking the about. The time period is short. And, and then, mm -hmm. especially it's the a Tupac. Year, year and a half. So we talking about this is something that happened where he sees these niggas, and then he sees a nigga who jumped on one of his partners, feel me, and he go get active. Yeah. I don't think his fear was getting active. Yeah. I think in the back of his mind, he was thinking like, man, these niggas ain't nothing. I'm not finna do nothing to these niggas. We don't really got no yeah. problem. So what So what do you predict? I want to hear it. So I bet I you a state, zero nigga. Predictions. I bet you another state. That this, listen, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. These niggas surprise me every <laughs> week. I don't even know what how this nigga's in jail. Man, I don't know, man. Um, right now, it just look like good TV. Yeah. It just sure. look like good TV right now, man. It's, yeah. It's a lot going on. It's a lot being said. It's, I don't know. I can't mm -hmm. say. I got you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, if I'm, if I was to make a prediction, I, I don't think Keith he gonna go to jail. I don't think so either. I don't know. Yeah, I, I hope the best for him because you know he, he healthy and everything. You, ne yeah. you, you never, you never know. Yeah, the motherfuckers never surprised. Know, I never thought they would arrest the motherfucker, but they, they definitely did. promoting and marketing the shit out of the story That's right for now. Though. Sure, yeah, that shit on Vegas on fire. Right motherfuckers now. at the job be talking about Keith D now. <laughs> <laughs> What what Keefe D doing? Yeah, you uh, don't even know. And it's what, crazy because the way they play with the nigga name, the nigga really was the guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've heard that from all accounts. You know, um, see that's the kind of story a nigga need to tell. Yeah. See, like niggas go right to the next story, ask me what what I would do with Nip, which is kind of not a correlation, but mm -hmm. that's the real story. Mm -hmm. the story is when street life comes to an end and crash, and then you can find yourself in these crazy situations. And this nigga was somebody who had multiple millions of dollars when I was younger. He mm -hmm. wasn't no punk. That nigga yeah. had that real coin mm -hmm. and real power. Yeah, yeah. So so transition a little bit, um, because while we was talking, I was just thinking about this crazy shit with uh Jada Pinkett sure. and uh and Will Smith. And I was just it made me think about your uh what was your song? Kanye shouldn't have Married That Bitch. Married that bitch. Should have never married. So that bitch. are we gonna see uh are you, are you gonna do a remix? Uh, Jada Pink, uh, Will Smith, shouldn't have never married. Cause I don't know, I wouldn't think of Jada as a like a promiscuous woman. I mean, I, give me. I mean, prime <laughs> Jada. I'm about to I don't say, know, new, don't Jada, know, new Jada, new Jada, new <laughs> Jada. But then again, if you now you think about it, if she wasn't with Cuz this this time and she messing with some dude, it looks different. Even though that was her kid's partner, that's like that's crazy, super fishy. Yeah. Interviewing I'm, a nigga, you was flipping. No, but that, but even past that, I'm saying just now, even with the recent, 
revelations. I mean, she just she's, embarrasses cuz. No, that's what I'm talking it's like about. Once a like, year, she comes out and be like, "Let me figure out how I can embarrass this nigga." Right. I feel like she's <laughs> right. Every right. year is like, "What?" How yeah. Could, and like she got a book, and I'm like, like "Cuz, why talk, is it bro. every Man. time?" But then Man. she wasn't even at the table, bro. Yeah. Wow. Now she, she, she got a book. Cuz today, it's, it's gone she beyond the table now. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, but why? Why she's every selling something year? right now? Right. Yep. She got a book. Yeah, and that and that Chris Rock slap makes sense. Yeah, right. Because she it's said like she that. told you told me. Nigga, don't try to say we wasn't talking. You told me this nigga man, tried to holler. Exactly. I don't believe it. Exactly. I believe it. I believe it. Chris a grimy ass nigga. I believe it too. I believe it. He ain't re, he ain't refuted it. Like yeah. Chris nigga. grimy as fuck. Chris <laughs> with all the bullshit. Yeah, he ain't. You think, you think he went after that? Hell yeah. <laughs> so real New York. Nigga, that do man. add a, another layer to it and, and context even, to it. If he did even that, it's like, it. well, I, I I get it. Even if it's not my broad, you know this, man. Why you getting at my broad? Yeah, bro? but why why yeah. is she doing all this talking though? You That's know. what she been doing the whole time. Yeah. What what's what what is what is that? I mean, let me ask you something. So, do you feel like it, you being in the entertainment uh, business for so long? Do you are you able to maintain your relationship because you keep it private? Hell yeah. That's the only way you could do it. Yeah. Hold on, I'm still tripping on the Chris thing, but we'll apologize. <laughs> like if he if he if if he really knew that, that part, would he have gone back and? Yes, he for sure will would apologize. Cause yeah. Will is like Mister All. I feel like if I knew that, I would stand on my shit. Like fuck it, I, I would have stood yeah, on it, real. slapping the nigga. Period. Yeah, yeah. I slap someone. Too and it something that, to do with yeah. the whole Oscar thing too, and him people yeah. trying to we'll, cancel we'll, him. Will Will is somebody who has been viewed as perfection. You know what I mean? And now we looking at his life and he just a nigga just like us. He need to get the Slapping fuck away people. from Jada. He looked defeated opinion. in that interview. And they man. not even together. Yeah. Even So we ain't been together in seven years. Why you got to, God damn, man. <laughs> but that's what I be talking How would you about. handle that situation? If your, if your, you know, significant other just got up and just said, man, me and Glass, he been capping. That nigga ain't this, he ain't that, he ain't made, what would, what would be would be like, Will, I ain't for to say nothing. I'm just be disappointed. <laughs> I can't do if you just talking shit, you know what I mean? I gotta let it go. But Will is in a bad Will smart. Will he know we gonna like nigga gonna talk about this for about well, niggas gonna compound this on Will yeah. shit, but Will is somebody that's trying to he might need this as sympathy. Yeah. Maybe he goes on a sympathy tour and he's back in the big budget films. Right. You know, Jada's is he, but he Maybe that's a, the play we don't I was even about know. to say that could that be could the play. Be the that play. could be they play could together. The play. See, and that's another thing. I'll be having to yeah. watch Jada because they it might be marketing. Man. Yeah, it, it seemed like because they man. shit get cool, yeah. and then it get hot, and it's like, why are we talk about them? Will ain't been in the fucking movie that we talked about <laughs> seven years. Why are we? Why do we give a fuck? And actually, if you think about it, it don't make no sense. I mean, she just said he proposed to her. She said Tupac. Yeah, Tupac proposed to it her. It just seemed like she just sit back and think of just that crazy shit. I feel like I, f- I feel like she reaching man because she got something she's selling and all that. She, they she, might got a plan. She kind of disgusted, yeah. man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Though. She used to be bad back in the day too. Yeah, low down dirty shame. Jada was. You know what's fine. funny? Jada right. and Gabrielle yeah. Union used to yeah. be every niggas like thing, and then now niggas like we look up. We like I was only certain niggas like I'm still going. Everybody else like I don't know. Man, it's a lot of them '90s bras that was cool. That's, that's they busted right now. Fucking with they, their yeah, bone structures they start and fucking all with that. Their face, face. Exactly. Not, exactly. She, yeah, she's no yeah. longer natural. It's like yeah. a. She look like I robot in that motherfucker. <laughs> she like that motherfucker. What's the uh but see the uh, personalities be that's what be fucking me up. Like Gabriel, you could have told me Gabrielle Union was this way back then. What way? How she is now. Like I would have looked at her like how she is. Like she just different. <laughs> what she do? She, everything. <laughs> everything she say is just different. Yeah. That is not what I thought she was saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What she so, say though? Huh? What she say? That's a mature woman too, and she ain't she ain't no youngster. <laughs> yeah, but that ain't I don't give a fuck. I thought she was younger. Uh, does. She like my I think she a year or two old. When she me. was talking about wearing the pants, okay, and how she needs to pants. I would have never thought that would be Gabby. Like Gabrielle, you yeah. just sound like somebody who the hood, like the niggas did her bad in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just start realizing that women is just women. They gon' Yeah. Like even a nigga like Dwayne Wade gonna do her back. Do you think that do you think the social media uh creates a, a divide that is divisive with black men and black women? Hell no. This shit been like this. Motherfuckers crazy. <laughs> we just come together. You don't think so? Nah, we just come together. They make all the I be seeing all that little shit. I be saying ain't nobody stop fucking. <laughs> But fucking easy. I'm now, talking about- Ain't nobody <laughs> stop trying to be together. But fucking is different from really connecting and 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 creating a life with somebody. Fucking is easy. I but think I'm they tried to, creating... but I do think social media, while not necessarily, 
I, I get the divide is the greatest part of the engagements, mm-hmm. but the yep. reality is social media created a, it's not possible to be with nobody else because all your expectations and goals are set based off of an imaginary place called social media. Yeah. So you start, right. shit, five years ago, seven years ago, everybody was golden. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett come to find out yep. they weren't even fucking with each That's other. That's right. Yeah, you're right. So again, right. it's like one of the things that where it's like, um, I don't think it's that easy, the easy rhetoric of men versus women. I think it was really the expectations being set on social media. I don't think, I think that is a part of it. But at the same time, I mean, we'd be remiss if we don't, I mean, if you think about it, with all the tropes and the memes and all of this, well, you know, a nigga need his bra to look like this and she got to bring this to the table. And then the chicks is, oh, he got to make this. He got to bring this to the table. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. What is niggas saying they bra got to look like? Cause I ain't seen that be. Oh, you ain't seen that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at the conversation, the conversation, you know, she got to have this. She got to have what a fat ass. What is niggas saying they got to say she got to You know, have. she got to have a fat ass. She got to do this. I ain't never heard she that. Got, that bought ass. Yeah. I, I never heard you that. You never heard that? No. Nah, okay. Women came up with that on their show. You say what? Women came up with that on their own. Okay. Didn't no nigga ever say a woman got to have a fat ass. Niggas I, just brag about a woman with a fat ass, but ain't nobody ever said a woman got to have a fat I've ass. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's, it's men out there that has these these requirements and the, this prerequisite set, yes. Hey, and nah. the same thing with, 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 with women. You know, women, nigga got to make a certain amount. He got to be a certain <laughs> height. He got to do this and do that. I, I remember all of those things because th- th- theirs has been consistent. <laughs> ain't, shit, ain't shit been like you feel me that nigga yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> women have always been on that book yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, listen um, I feel like men is always I'm trying to think of all the I, you know I've been divorced and single but on the dating apps yeah men just chasing the pussy like, that's what any honestly pussy. they can have a flat ass a flat fat fat ass, ass a mid ass but chicks is hella picky I'm hell like, yeah what do you where do you work yeah, yeah. Do you low, do? We, we the low hanging fruit we will give you a chance <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah we will give you a chance pull up yeah. fuck with yeah. it and then yeah. it's up to you because to men will have a bitch hop out and not look like the picture and be like uh, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's nine o'clock yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> so then you got a chance yeah. Like I saw this meme the other day cause on Instagram yesterday and there was a lady, she said she had been dogging this nigga out and she hadn't wanted to talk to him. He'd been trying to talk to her, take her out. So they go out to eat at some space in Atlanta to have great oysters. Mm-hmm. And she just ordered like all these trays of oysters. First off, why is you on a day order six dozen oysters? Yeah. And then you ordering drinks and food and all that. She like, she got mad cause the man Left the man skipped out on the bill, like he was like, I'm not paying this shit. Yeah, and she was just like, you know, that was. Some <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, why would you order all these She's oysters? Over ordering. Let me let me ask you real quick. This is a random question. Y'all prefer y'all fuck with them BBLs or you like nasty? That shit is horrible. Nope, I'm anti. I don't even think I know niggas who prefer BBLs. Me neither. I think neither. every man I know has. Men has got. We've gotten into the business of accepting women just. Crazy, mm-hmm. just all a craziness. Mm-hmm. Feel me? Like none of us ever came up with that. If a nigga, this is my point. Look, look, Corey. Cause if a nigga she told a girl, "Hey, you know what? I need to get you a BBL." He don't like you. Yeah, that shit. That shit. I, I mean, listen. No disrespect to women who want to do that. And all whatever, disrespect to women. But, <laughs> but I don't know. To me, it gives. It's I, all I mean, it, it, gives, it gives prosthetic limb vibes to me. Like you know, what I'm saying it's just like weird. <laughs> like a match. motherfucker got a hook. Yeah. On it. It's like you don't want to touch it. It's like damn, yeah. that's kind of crazy. It's like when you used to play with your Legos. And shit. <laughs> Court, I'm over it. I'm yeah, overacting like I'm nasty. cool with it. No, it's disrespectfully. LA, and they, disrespectfully, it's, it's, I mean, they try it, to blame us for them, and they try to blame us for them. Them getting it, it's right? Like, I don't. I think they get it for other chicks. That's all. No, yeah. And it's yeah. now it's a showcase of wealth. Yep. Yeah. Just say you can't afford it without and then, saying it. And say you insecure <laughs> for not liking it, or or not thinking that you think it's cool. But see, that's what I'm saying. That's why I mean it disrespectfully. That yeah. shit is stupid. Yeah. And the problem is, I don't give a fuck how good it looking clothes. Soon as them clothes come off, every last one look bad. Like these yeah. cameras, nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm tired of niggas lying. <laughs> I'm tired of niggas lying. If a nigga let you go get it, he don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no nigga love you that much that he was like, this is cool. Hey, I wanna I wanna transition to ask you yeah. something that just uh came to the top of my mind. So this social media age, right? Yeah. And us being here in LA and you know, content creators and all of that, 
Um, what do you think about the way that a lot of these influencers, content creators use their platforms for the beef and the bullshit? You know, how do you navigate that and stay out of that bullshit? And are you in the know if some of this shit is WWE? Is it real? Or you think that's healthy for the game? It jukes the algorithm, it's controversy, it's all that, or you think it's some fuck shit? I just need to know what the ceiling look like. Mm -hmm. I can't make a choice without knowing what the top nigga look like. Mm. Is the top that. nigga doing it a multi-millionaire? I doubt it. Then then I don't know what niggas is doing. Mm -hmm. Who gets in the game trying to be the 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 90th best point guard in the NBA? Right. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people trying to solve their personal issues and desire for care, mm -hmm. you know, just seeking cheap attention. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, do How I do you stay good? out the bullshit? I got talent. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really But dope. even with you having talent, I'm sure people still throw rocks and say little shit. You just don't entertain it. You just don't even- It'd be dope. It'd be, a, it'd be a rap song. Mm -hmm. Only the people that's doing that don't got no talent. That's true. I agree. You know what I mean? And I, no shame to them. Yeah, they just yeah. don't have no talent. No, right. No skill yeah. set. Yeah. yeah. So like, they got to use It'll never be the same. I'm mm -hmm. never going to sit in the camera and do all that shit with you. I'm going to drop a diss song and a video and <laughs> have you looking Make dumb so you can fuck of. around over here. Yeah, give you some shit Yeah, to I'm going to give about. you really something to shine off of. It's going to make you platinum in the yeah, states. It becomes obvious that people trying to chase virality to the point where it get real corny. you like, oh, I can actually see that you trying to do some shit that mm -hmm. this is not real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I do think it's eventually there's going to be some serious consequences mm -hmm. for Guaranteed. a few people in the space. Yeah. And we all, and I think that's why we all kind of pay attention because we mm -hmm. waiting to see what's going to happen. Playing for the right. you know, the, that's right. You know, the real niggas, they talk mm -hmm. about it behind the scenes. Like, nigga, you see this, you see that? But yeah. we ain't going to discuss it right. like that because right. we just like, yeah, you just yeah eventually, like, man, this is See that motherfucker happen. just, yeah, you be like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For real. So let me ask you a real question, a hard question, sure. honest question, and I know you're going to keep it 100. Do you think the LA music scene has fallen off? I think we're in a struggle because, you know, it's trying to reinvent itself. There's a fear of hip hop is street urban culture. Los Angeles street urban culture as a mainstay has not changed. And it's already been marketed for 40 years. Colors came out in like 86, 87, or 88. 86. See what well, year the colors come out. It's either 86 or 88, something like that. Uh, colors came out in, let me see what that is, 1988. Mm -hmm. So roughly a little <laughs> less than 40 years, 35 years, Los Angeles street urban culture has been marketed on a mainstream level. Mm hmm. So there's a there's a fear of like, yo, I got to do something different because this is already overexposed or as a nigga would say, played out. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the rest of the world not going to buy it from you because they already know what it looked like. So if you something too different, they going to be like, no. So for sure, you got to be in either a skater, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. Gleam in the Cube, like when that shit came out I in 90, 91. Because yeah. <laughs> we've always had this really dope yeah. street urban scene with skaters. Yeah. Them motherfuckers is wild, hit you outside your head with a skateboard, wearing vans. Mm -hmm. My first, my first, uh, my first article as an artist was in Thrasher. Mm, okay. Because that's how close our street urban scenes is. You know, yeah. you go too far west, you get over there by Melrose and right. Fairfax. That's a skate scene. That's where you get our future and all that. Yeah. And then obviously all the shit we from, right? The gangs and mm -hmm. all of that. So I think for roughly 35 years, they've been marketing LA street urban culture. Like if I ask you, name a huge drug dealer from LA. Mm -hmm. Name a huge drug dealer from LA. Huge or big? Big. Tootie Reese? Right, fair, right? Yeah. Name a drug dealer from LA that made great money. Freeway Rick. Right, okay, so boom. Name a popular rapper. From LA? Yeah. Ice Cube. Name a popular crip that's not a rapper. A popular crip that's not a rapper. Yeah. Um, Tookie. It's a popular crip. Tookie, right? Okay. Name a popular crip that's not a rapper. Uh, turtle. Right? <laughs> Fucking Turtle. One of the greatest kind of crip ever, right? Shout so, out to Turtle. Name a popular drug dealer from Memphis. Name the biggest drug dealer from Memphis. Mm. Name a 
super killer from Memphis, a, a gang member that's a popular gang member from Memphis. Mm. We just now discovering St. Louis culture. Mm -hmm. We just now discovering Memphis culture. Y'all know us like the back of y'all hands. <laughs> that's a great point, Glasses. And street urban culture, that's why New York is struggling. Like, y'all know us like the back of y'all hands. What can I show you different? That's a great fucking What can point. I show you different about LA life? The street urban life. Point. Nigga, you might argue me. I be having niggas from out of town arguing me down <laughs> on some shit that's next door. Yeah. Like Tupac must die. It was a rapper who put out a song. I forgot this kid's name. He's from like on the East Coast. He made the song about Tupac and he was like the murder or something. I don't I never saw it till after. Like mm -hmm. and he was telling people like I stole his idea. And his shit was like about some like spiritual, some like he was on some other shit. Like he was on some real <clears throat> boom bap shit to me, just different. And I never saw it because it was it, it wouldn't be something I would look at. Right. But he was like, he was talking to a blogger, and the blogger in the story was like, he was like, yeah, you know, he's like, so how you feel knowing glasses stole your idea? He's like, you know, it's crazy because I put in all this time and energy. He's like, he goes and make up some story like that. I've never heard that type of story in my I never heard that story in my life. Mm -hmm. That's funny. This nigga really felt he knew who yeah. what happened more than me. Yeah. So y'all been hearing about our street urban culture for 40 fucking years. That's a great point, bro. Y'all know I never everything. thought of it like that. Y'all know everything. Point. So every new artist is coming out trying to figure out how to be fresh new. Right. And it just happens to be they make this horrible mistake of thinking being new is emulating somebody else and being from here. Like if I'm an LA nigga that sound like I'm from the South, this new. No, you just a biter. So what does LA need to do to rejuvenate, you know, and get the ball back musically? Hey, it's, it's going to be hard to get the ball back as a whole, right? Because again, it's too it's too dope to discover Memphis and St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Discovery is always going, to, you know, be a bigger conversation than recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that's true. That's true. Because you know all my favorite shit recently, like Mo Three out of Dallas, yeah, and the people, I was like, oh, I didn't even know Dallas had like, and they know, got a crazy street yeah. scene, right? So you, uh, yellow bees in. If somebody accuses like, you of something, right, you get accused of rape, and then they get it wrong. The press conference for the accusation is gonna be always big. gonna be. We yeah. all gonna be like, yeah. damn. Yeah. And then if like, if, like if we was wrong, it's like it's gonna be exactly three press every time, be three cameras there every time. Boy, the <laughs> accusation because there's fifty yeah. people there. They all the court. What are you gonna do, man? You like, bro? Ain't it's no not court. True. What you gonna do? <laughs> you like, another name. Ken, what are you gonna do? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. You get already. What when you that gonna shit do? Like that come out, right? What you gonna do? Yeah. And then, like, would they be like, when the girl was like, "Well, I was lying." Yeah, it's like two people there. Yeah, I'm gonna tweet about it. I told y'all. Nobody gonna retweet it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's Nobody gonna argue. Like, that ain't that ain't. Nobody exciting. gonna say I'm sorry. No. No. Trying to see a nigga go to jail. They still gonna be like, "Well, he did it anyway." You know what I'm saying? So. I think it's tough because for 40 years, y'all just been discovering nah, everything right. about this shit. That's a great point. I think we have to commit to recovery mm -hmm. of culture. Yeah. I think it's going to be tough to do discovery because, and you're not, and I tell my young homies, <clears throat> just having, looking like you got money is not, you're not doing nothing new. Right. You just look like a fucking dick. So what does that recovery look like? You see it on Cancel These Nuts. You looking at it. I got you. You looking at the attitude. It don't got to be necessarily gangbanging because I yeah. don't think that's what it was about. We right. Was talking to EP and Joey and shit. It's like, it's it's about getting that attitude back. Yeah. So See, nobody talk. can provide the attitude. Yeah. No other region mm -hmm. in the country can provide this crazy LA nigga attitude. Yeah. Except us. Do you think it was coming back? Because honestly, Nip was still LA th that we've always known, but so dope. Draco. Was you know what I mean? L.A. is so dope, and then you know we lost both of them. Yeah, but like I feel like that was Recipe. the rediscovery. Like people was really falling in love with Nip. And yeah, he, and he's the same thing, right? He's still just as L.A. is. is Hell yeah, that nigga's a motherfucking a crip. But it's like I don't know if people was really moving the way they should. I think y'all made. I think the world made it really hard. I mm -hmm. think there's something that happened when he passed away versus when he was living. Yeah. And I remember his struggles and and yeah. and to watch him go through shit living right. and not people not embrace him, yeah. treating him like the crip he was, like, you know, he was yeah. impervious to regular mm -hmm. human shit and not embracing him. So even Draco, like I remember him and watching mm -hmm. him put out records and the whole world never coming to the whole party. 
That's right. You know what I mean? Then when he died, now everybody, oh, they, yep. that was Every my time. guy. I was rocking with Every him to the I end. Go. Like, yep. No, you weren't. No, you fucking You won. know why? Because I think that I think that regret is a stronger emotion than gratitude. Oh. Oh. You know? And it's a definitely a more often practice. Yep. That's true, because we all come from rap. Yeah. So I'm over here like, no, nah, I was rocking with them, but also I was trying to film with Nip right. on the other side because my camera operator and B is his brother's BH. Mm. You know what I mean? So I was already like, nah, Nip is dope. I mean, when but... you got to think, Nip put out his first CD the same year I put out my first CD in 2005. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we ain't yeah. talk about somebody that's... <laughs> but that's 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 just human nature, bro. Because, I mean, like I, like I was saying with Charleston White, he said something real the other day, and he was like, you really can't measure a man till he's gone. You know, while we still here, you can't really add him up. You know what I mean? But when everything is done and it's over with, and because you don't have access to it anymore, it's not here no more, now you can tally it up. And that's where you kind of measure. I don't know if you if you have to, right? Um I mean most people, I think it's a You shouldn't it's a, have to. You shouldn't have to, but it's it's a level of but wisdom that's why and maturity. That's why I don't trust their math. To. Huh? That's why I don't trust their math. Mm -hmm. I feel like women was like that with Tupac. Mm-hmm. Explain. What do you mean? I feel like when I was in high school, there was women that was talking bad about him. They didn't even really understand the circumstances, mm -hmm. what happened with his rape, mm -hmm. how he was charged. It wasn't a rape. He right. didn't get convicted of a rape. Right. They don't understand. And I remember being in high school and women being like, oh, I'm not fucking with Pop. And then when he passed, it's like, well, he might have not been that bad of a guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So that's every I, time I don't even know if I trust that math of we can only tally a man because we tally a lot of great men. But... I, I've been having this conversation lately. It keeps circling back to me where mm -hmm. I keep telling people Snoop Dogg is one of the most, it's probably the most famous person living. You know what I mean? Like one of the most famous people that ever walked the earth. Mm -hmm. And people can't tally him. It's it's nothing but shame and people talking shit. And I'm like, bro, it's Snoop Dogg. Like, right. why would we be, Right. you know what I mean? Jay-Z, Jay-Z is the villain now. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, Jay, Kanye. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, it's, they did it with Martin Luther King. Yeah. I, they did it with Muhammad Ali. They yeah. did it with Malcolm X. You know That's what I mean? just human nature, bro. I, and they, I just they're think- They're gonna do it with us too. And know? I think they pieces of shit. Yeah, they gonna I, do I don't it with th us. I don't think it's a real, true effort. Yeah. I don't trust it. I don't I don't even smile at it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's genuine. I think people just love to hide behind something that don't require mm -hmm. discipline or a true commitment. Mm -hmm. See, when Nip was alive to say you supported him, yeah. it would've took some work. You'd have to go spend some money and really support him. That's right. When he passed away, you could just go get a tattoo and now you could just join in on a bunch of people celebrating somebody. That's right. And I remember what my nigga went through. Like, I remember those times. I remember how tough it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm not riding with all these motherfuckers acting like, oh, fuck, no you didn't. No, you fucking didn't. Because he probably wouldn't even been right there if all y'all was fucking with him. Not y'all specifically. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a lot of a lot of foolish shit motherfuckers when it came to that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Let's talk about the album. Yeah. Cancel these nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's self-explanatory. Um, y'all got a new movement, uh going well, not a new movement, but um recovery. Yeah. Uh and, and reclaiming, you know what I'm saying, real uh real men. Yeah, masculinity. You know? Yeah, masculinity and 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 getting the the um I guess what is it? The beta shit on up out of here, right? Yeah. Hold so, on, this say featuring Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. <laughs> All right. Who is it? Notorious Big. Yeah. Hi, really? Well, obviously he didn't rap on the solo. I ain't that good. <laughs> could could cross over, but yeah. to me, I think when I use somebody's vocals, it's important to credit them. Okay. Yeah, you know I mean, I especially you. if I if I featured their idea. Okay. You know what I mean? I didn't want people to make it. You know, you got to be yeah. really careful. And, I, and I'm really, it's really important that mm -hmm. if I didn't create your idea, then I need to credit you. Yeah. Now, I if you. I created your idea, it's different. I got you. So, so talk about the album, man. I mean, what made you want to, you know, I mean, that's kind of what you do. You know, you take your, your album <laughs> titles and even song titles are, are unique to, sure. to, to Glasses Malone, you know. Sure. Um, let me ask you something. And don't take offense to this. Do you, do you? Do you feel like you a little bit of a troll? No. Okay. I've heard that a lot of times. Yeah. Though. I'd be like all the time. Yeah, I'd be like trolling. Yeah. Yeah. But is it? And really... when I say trolling, no, I get it. I you get know it. what I mean? Yeah. Just kind of like, oh yeah, this I'm a this is gonna ruffle some feathers right here. I'm gonna fuck them up with that. Definitely that, mm -hmm. but only because it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Am I a troll? No, no, I'm not a troll. I'm, I don't do clickbait either. I, I think maybe yeah, you're a troll. What, what it, I think you're troll adjacent. Would you say you're troll adjacent? I, I just don't know. <laughs> well, because it's not like like even if I make a song called Kanye should have never married that bitch, right? Yeah. People could fit could think that's a troll, but it's really just you can't turn a hoe into a housewife and then I put it into actual people. Right. That tried to I, I put it into somebody I really respect that tried to and it like the plane went down in fire. It went down in flames. Yeah. It's just you can't turn so it's like, am I really trolling when I tell Kanye you shouldn't have married mm -hmm. that lady and, and turned that lady into a housewife? I'm probably not trolling. Yeah. I think we all know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I know it sounds crazy, but like yeah. what I like to do best is I like to become the voice of our barbershops. Yeah. So I got you. if it's something we all say in I private, I become the voice you of the public. You just be the man. one that had a heart to say it. That's yeah. it. So okay. it's not really an effort of trolling because I don't think I find things that my community doesn't think is true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not I finding you. things just to annoy people. I'm not trying to annoy people. Got you. But I do yeah. want you to contend with ideas as I create them. Right. So you want to provoke some thought and some conversation. Yeah. yeah. You, you have to. Like I have to bring them. I had a great idea. Like I had a great thought. Like a great stream of consciousness. And shout out to Kanye because this, that's the idea that came from him. But great hip hop, right? Takes people like where we from, uncomfortable people. Mm -hmm. Right, and it makes us comfortable because somebody's voicing our opinion in the world that's ignoring us. Mm -hmm. Great hip hop voices. makes everybody comfortable in regular mainstream America, uncomfortable having to deal with our truths. Mm -hmm. So great hip hop makes uncomfortable people comfortable, and it makes comfortable people uncomfortable. Mm. Okay, I dig that, and that's kind of where I really hold on to. So, in saying that you know, going to cancel these nuts and the single, something for the bitches. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that was inspired by just tired of the bitch ass shit and just telling just people, just telling the niggas, the soft niggas, what the bitch is going to do. Yeah, and, cr and cracking jokes and having fun. That's another you know thing. What I'm saying? Yeah. That's a lot really of it is it bringing comedy back. Yeah. yeah. Like West Coast stuff. When you, And that's what I said. It's such a recovery mission of culture. If y'all remember the first time y'all heard the West Coast, it probably was funny if you heard from Southern California. Mm -hmm. Oh, them the NWA niggas was funny as hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Death Row niggas is funny as hell. Yeah. LA street niggas in general are all fucking comedians. Yeah. And we don't take nothing serious. So 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 what you fighting for with this with this new single and the new album? What, Man, I'm what, fighting, what fighting for, for masculinity. Like, mm -hmm. like hip hop is America's last hope. Mm -hmm. Like if I was a politician, cause that really would be my tagline. Mm -hmm. Like, look at this shit going on. Right. So define masculinity in in, two, in in this year. Define masculinity. In this year? Yeah. It's a dire to be accepted, which is weird in this year. Mm -hmm. Like, men today are too desperate to be accepted. That is some girl shit. Mm-hmm. Also, they're too desperate to explain everything. Mm. You think that's a, a trait of weakness? Yes. Why so? Because you don't need to explain. Mm -hmm. But See, don't. But don't, do you feel like? But understanding? Because sometimes the biggest distance between two people is not necessarily uh, proximity, but misunderstanding. So you don't think that there's a place for communication and better understanding. Or you, or you feel like it should just be, I said it, and just do what you will with it. Fuck it. I think if someone is genuine with really, if they really don't understand you and you think they don't truly understand you, mm -hmm. then y'all can have a conversation. But you, it's a space now where people are purposely not trying to understand you. Mm -hmm. They just choosing to be upset or choosing to blame their feelings on you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, fuck all that. I yeah. meant what I said and I stand on it and I, and um. I don't feel bad about what I said. Mm -hmm. And just cause you feel away cause I said it, that really ain't got shit to do with me. So basically it's not my duty to, you know, help you figure out how you feel of what I said. I nah. Mean, 
It ain't. I said what I said, and you got to work through that. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless mm -hmm. we, unless it's genuine, and I believe that, and I mm -hmm. will have to see that. But if you just somebody in the comments, yeah, mad, just committed to misunderstanding, you, you, you comment a, under a post a, on, you know, yeah, just celebrating yeah. some bullshit. It's like there's a value I'm in being misunderstood. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a value in being misunderstood. Explain what's that? <laughs> It's like if you have kids, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have children. I do. Right. Let's say That's you have my a youngest right there. Okay. Uh, how old is she? Nineteen. About to 19, be nineteen. Right. So when she was nine, imagine trying to explain to her something that's going to stop her from being hurt. Mm -hmm. And you trying, hey, don't do this because this is going to lead to you hurt. And you try to explain to her nine year old self why this would hurt her. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't need understanding. That's you just right. need wreck. You need just need respect. Yep. And just listen, obey. Just listen to the directive. That's yeah. a cornerstone of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Like it's nothing wrong. Like we, I don't think men were ever unintelligent enough to explain themselves. Mm -hmm. We just understood the world didn't. Everybody outside of us didn't just give a fuck about what made sense. Sometimes it would be a, it'd be about it would be about what made somebody feel better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or what they wanted to do without any sense of consequence. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we created a world for women to be unaccountable. Right. Chivalry is rooted in unaccountability. All of these ideas is rooted in women being unaccountable mm -hmm. because we've always been their protector. And they expect it right now. Mm -hmm. The difference is they expect you to do it with them purposely going out to do something to hurt themselves. Mm. See, back in the day, it would be like a little different. It'll be more like, uh, it'll be more like they did something and just accidentally happened to them. Mm -hmm. Now they're just laying up under a knife out yeah. of some sense of looking better when it's not going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And again, you know, our job is to protect them. Okay. So again, it's not always about them understanding why I'm saying don't do this. Sometimes gotcha. it's about just don't do that shit. So what do you define uh, as zesty? It's a great question. Shout out to Bosco. Shout out to uh, Bosco, well, honey. Paint your fingernails. Okay. Hella zesty. Rainbow barrettes. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is up with Drake with that stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's so dumb. I hate that shit. Do you think that that Drake, when Pete, well, let me go ahead. Zesty list. Um, the zesty list is hilarious, nigga. It's a <laughs> super fucking list. <laughs> Niggas wearing purses. Yeah, yeah. You I can't ain't toughen it up putting a gun in That's there. That's right. You're right. not tough. Right. You just a bitch you with peeped a, that too. You just a bitch with a gun. You yeah. peeped that. I <laughs> peeped that. Yeah, they Niggas try to say it's a to, gun. Oh, nigga, I yeah. got the Draco in there. Nigga. You know what? Like, know. you got a whole fucking That's a purse. bag. It's yeah, a purse. It's a purse. Yeah, it's a purse. Uh, five small chains. Like chokers, chokers. Yeah, like why you got five of them on? Just went, just That's men crazy. trying to impede on women's beauty standards. Yeah, I get serious. It'll get crazy to me. Mm -hmm. You start dying your beard and shit too much. I'm looking at you crazy. <laughs> so is that zesty or is that metrosexual or is that? See, metrosexual and zesty walk a fine line. They yeah. like, yeah, because I don't like know, because I don't know if dying your shit is. Cause see, he's thinking about it. You see, that's what no, I said. No, no, that? No, that nigga no, but that, yeah, because I, I mean, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But um, but I'm saying that's where I don't know if that's zest. I, yeah. I'm going too far because I see where you going. Yeah. Like you going. Mm -hmm. she, so that's the fine line. Human like you beings don't there. just stop there. It's like a woman tell you the first time she get her titties. I'm just get my titties. That's mm -hmm. not gonna stop. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be something else next. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like. The so there's no gray not, area with, with zest. So zest is zest. Like, no, like if you got the John Stockton shorts because you hooping, yeah. I get it. But if you oh, wearing yeah. a Johnny Stockton shorts just yeah. for people to see your thighs, shorts. Shorts. you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they they starting to wear the same shorts as the girls in the gym. Because yeah. you know the girls wearing yeah. shorts in the gym now, that's crazy. That's real. And so, the niggas I mean? is like, there I was want a dude them. in leggings at the gym I, when I was at the gym. And, and, yeah, and see, football shit. players used to wear leggings, mm -hmm. like running backs would wear leggings. Yeah. Under yeah. But, you didn't, practice. but you didn't pay attention because you like, that's <laughs> yeah. football shit. Niggas used to wear biker shorts back in the day. I, you know what? If the niggas, they used to lift weights. Yeah. That was their thing. And but, you just looked at it like wrestlers. Yeah. You yeah. didn't think now, wrestlers was zesty. Everybody is just. Men are shit. looking at women and I genuinely think they're like jealous. Like, <laughs> shit bitch get to have her nails done. <laughs> I, I ain't lying to you, dog. Some of this shit be just So, so hold on. Mind. I'm gonna just, and listen, I agree with you, but sure. just for the sake of conversation, sure. you know, because you know, you're a great debater. 
I mean, what if it's just what what happened to just them expressing themselves and just What are you also what are you expressing to me? I don't I I mean creates <laughs> what, individuality. Is it really? Yeah, you won't be is the only really nigga with the red nails. Individuality? <laughs> or are you siding with a lot of other people who do the same exact thing? Yeah, I think them you, is crazy. Bro. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I'm I'm in. I'm with you. Yeah. I I'm, I'm not I'm just saying are you yeah. really like if you did something that was unique, okay. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You 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 went and cut off your eyebrows. Like, yeah. That's expression. But if you start arching them, <laughs> you know there's a demographics of humans that yeah. exist yeah. that already do this. <laughs> if you paint That's your right. nails, you know there's a demographic of humans that decide that this is going to be their calling card. So you don't believe Are we too old? Are we too old to see the trends change though? I mean, there's there's dudes out there that now I'm in my 40s now, and I go back home sometimes, and the people catching murder charges, I look at them objectively, like he bodied somebody, yeah, because they got the tight pants and they mm-hmm. might have their fingernails painted. Well, I don't think I don't think they, it. I think a woman to kill somebody. Yeah. Nah, but I'm saying the street dudes back home where I'm from yeah. look different Zesty. to me. I'm not, I'm not going there. Zesty, I still got to go Zesty home. Zesty killer. But that's okay. Yeah, that's but, cool. But they, they all around, though. It ain't just I'm in saying, your town. They yeah, out nah, here too. It, but it what I'm saying it is- don't, It don't mean that you not you won't kill somebody, but that don't define masculinity neither. Right, right. Like, you know, being a thug or being tough is not what it is. It's, it's <clears throat> Being a man is not about being- a, It's being okay with who you are. Right. Women- struggle to deal with who they are. Forgive me. I know that. Some women. Me, lady. Some women. 99%. No. Nah, the culture nah, of women. Because we're I mean, all women, probably women, women, in the same age women range. Women are but... not a monolith. I mean, you know, you have- Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. They're not. Yes, they are. They're as not. much they fight it, they're, they're very not. much a monolith. Just like men are the monolith. Like, yes, we're we all, are. No, we're not. Yes, we, we only want to not be <laughs> when it's to our benefit. The reality <laughs> is most women, nine, the culture of women, the culture of women yeah. is a monolith. The culture of women. There's no culture. other culture. When you say women. culture, so are you going to just their sensibilities and their their um, dispositions because of the emotion coming from an emotional space? Like, so you're saying in terms of how we think because we're logical. I, I think women even have logic, but I think women succumb to all insecurities a lot sooner than us. We deal with our insecurities different because we mm-hmm. both have insecurity. Mm-hmm. Okay, men, women hurt women when they insecure. Okay. Right? They'll they'll like like they'll do something to themselves. You know what I mean? When they worried about how they look, they'll go do some crazy shit, right? Oh, to I themselves. see what you're saying. Okay. Right? They'll hurt women. Mm-hmm. Men will hurt women when they insecure <laughs> with themselves. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, yeah. You'll just start meeting women, <laughs> fucking the business. You ain't gonna do none of the right things with them. Yeah. Women hurt women when they fucked up. Okay. Men hurt women. <laughs> <laughs> when men are fucked up. Okay, so tracing the pathology of what you're saying. So you're saying <laughs> that's that. funny. <laughs> Think about okay. it. Like when you okay. when you be insecure, you just start busting some bitches. You have no purpose. You just become. They you feel become like a that's, that's tool. You, you you feel like that uh, precipitates from insecurity. One hundred percent. That's really? the only reason men feel like we need to get a lot of bitches. You think so? Yeah, because I mean, I don't know. I don't get. I don't think. Well, about back that. prime prime court, you know, it might be different. But I don't know. I'm not saying. That. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Remember back in the day, like the you remember, like Hugh Hefner, like you Hugh Hefner. We ain't never heard how much money he had. Yeah. We just knew he had a mansion full of bitches. Yeah. He was as great as any rich nigga in the world. Mm-hmm. Hugh Hefner was up there with Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. Because he had bitches. Let's talk about Prince. Yeah. Prince is fucking hella bitches. Don't care what no one say I don't know about him. Fucking business. He's wearing high heels and fucking so you think skirts you think Prince? Well, he was saying, zesty. But go what ahead. I'm saying about the dudes right now, because I don't know them, mm-hmm. but you gotta know, be comfortable with who you are yeah. to do the shit that don't feel comfortable to us. I don't believe that. But are we are we yeah. judging them? And could they potentially be like, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm feel like a man. I do whatever the fuck yeah. I want to do. I don't care what you feel about. It's not about else. that. It's about what you permeating off to the rest of masculinity, to the rest yeah. of kids. So let's talk about Prince then, because Prince is the same thing, right? Yeah, but I Very don't know why Prince there. is. Yeah, but would it make Prince any different? Prince don't got. I, Prince could have been fucking niggas. I don't know. Do you think Prince was? I don't know. I'm not in this business, but I I, like Prince, Prince wouldn't be Prince wouldn't be the objectivity <laughs> of masculinity for me. I wouldn't nah, raise my son looking nah, up to Prince. Nah, I wouldn't say that. That's dude. not to say now if my son wants to play the bitches though. Yeah, Prince would take niggas. No, now if my son wants to play instruments or make music. Hey, meet Prince. Yeah. But if like, if that nigga, 
it's a lot of more niggas. I guess I'm in just between. being de- devil's advocate, like yeah. objectively. No I, worries. I don't know these dudes with the. No band. worries. No it worries. Seemed like we, you probably did give Prince a pass though, because oh niggas just... knew Prince was zesty. Yeah. No, yeah, no, we knew that, but we I'm just saying like, like zesty but, but he might have been the most player though. Ma- Prince masculine. was a player. Yeah. I, ain't, yeah. I ain't gonna have none Listen, of that. All Prince of the eighties rock dudes, and that that's, nigga yeah. was androgynous. That yeah. nigga was zesty. And he as probably shit, was zesty as shit. Was don't, was zesty. Because that just because a nigga, listen, thug is zesty. That don't mean he don't got no jams, and that he'll bust your fucking head. Shit. <laughs> right? It's that proven. Nigga was zesty as shit. But that don't change. He's Damn. listen. Nah, just because yeah. you could be like a real trooper, don't mean that I'm still nigga. I'm supposed to make fun of you. Yeah. That's what our job is. We men. Yeah. We yeah. making yeah. jokes about you. It don't mean nothing if yeah, you don't mean right. it. only gonna bother you if you insecure. That's right. And it'll bother you if it's true. If and it's really, really true. we give entirely too much credit to Prince because really he just had a pop version of what Rick James does. See, Rick James was the same way, nah, but he was so nah, much more nah, of a nigga. No, nah, no, nah, we're not gonna do that. Yes, we are. I know Rick Prince. felt like I know no, no, Rick, Rick felt is like that nigga that. though. No, Rick was that nigga. No, Rick is no, that Rick nigga. Is that nigga. And them niggas he was following Mike. He is. And Mike he and, I'm not Mike saying, and Prince. I'm not saying that Prince didn't too. borrow. And from Mike Rick. and Prince both borrowed from that nigga in real time. No, they did. Rick was the nigga in real time. No, yeah, not like ten years later. Like my new shit come out. But Prince was Prince though. Let's let's get that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it, but Prince ain't Prince without Rick James. Just like just like Michael Jackson borrowed from. James Brown and Prince James Brown and Rick, and Rick James. Yeah, for sure. But Everybody, Mike is Mike still though. Rick is the giver, but you saw Prince doing it. That was Rick was doing the same thing, but Rick just looked like a hell of a nigga doing nah, it. Nah, I mean Prince that? just put a little bit more whip on it. You nah, know he, what I'm saying? He, he took a lot of if whip. If you think off about of it. what was it, ghetto songs, that nigga Rick had on some fucking leather cold boots. It's ice cold yeah, nigga. That nigga was dressed in tight leather boots. with the yeah the red. Boots. He is the original. The album was banging. He is though. the original. But Man, you talking about street songs? Street songs. I was I, I, Ty Dolla Sign is that nigga. Yeah, I'm trying to get Ty Dolla Sign to make that album right now. Yeah. Ty Dolla Sign is really that nigga in reincarnated. Yeah. That's why, nigga, I see Kanye finna. I'm like, nigga, I told you you was Rick James. Kanye <laughs> saw that shit too. He's like, man, this nigga's Rick James. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's like. Rick was the giver. Like, mm-hmm. so what you saw Prince to me, it wasn't more whip on it, it's less whip on it. That's why I look so appealing to the white folk. Rick was like a straight nigga. He was doing some crazy, zesty shit, but you be like, yeah. man, nigga, Rick, you ain't think nothing about Rick. That's Prince true. the whole time, as brave as song, what niggas was like, I don't know, but it don't matter because nobody really care if you fuck niggas if nah. you dope. Nah, Elton I mean, John is dope. Yeah. Freddie Mercury is dope. Nobody cared. They say Luther, yep. Teddy, who the fuck cares? Yep. It's only yeah, when your true. shit ain't dope. Yeah. And that's the problem with niggas now. Like, we looking at niggas, we like, eh, you doing a lot of zesty shit. It's because that music ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Drake come out with his most questionable that music album. Ain't, that music ain't Drake straight, come out nigga. with his most questionable album. <laughs> not, not, my, not my opinion, but yeah. you see more criticism that you really see yeah. for Drake album. And now you got these little rainbow barrettes. Do you feel like that criticism is is just, I mean, you just said you ain't heard the album, but do you feel like some of the Drake Palone be hate because he's on top? Or do you feel like that he's really just kind of not that dope of an artist? Drake is fucking fantastic. I think so too. He's Madonna as a rapper. I think so too. Madonna is a rapper. Yes. Think about what Madonna stop. does critically. Glasses stop. <laughs> y'all just, because you know last what? 15 minutes. <laughs> stop it, Glasses. But I'm going to tell you why y'all say that. Because y'all don't got enough fucking respect for Madonna. No, EP. Oh, Hold I up. fuck with Madonna. What let you let EP about? come sit right here. I can sing a fucking Hold up. Madonna EP. song come, right come, now. Let EP sit right here. Joey, hold up. Nah, come on, good. Hold up, Hold up, Because we need to, because we need to pack how bad Madonna is. You probably don't even know Borderline. Come on, don't do me like that. You don't even know Borderline. Live to tell. What would you? Hold up. Pull that mic up. Tell these niggas. So Irvin Pope produced. Yeah, Irvin Pope. Yes. The album. Yes. Top to bottom. Executive producer. Executive producer of LEX as well. Produced for. Produced, played on Kanye's (laughs) albums. Played on a lot of Kanye's (laughs) albums. Yo, a ton of them. You know, played on Scarface. Got some of Scarface's most important records of his of this third, fourth quarter of his career as far as a rapper being. Mm -hmm. You know, fantastic ear, could play, band, everything. So shout out to Irvin Pope. Shout out to EP, brother. Thank Thank you, man. Yeah, you play. Why all is it wrong? I play keys and and okay and some drums, but organ, uh, pianos, keys. Anyone? Okay. Nice. Yeah. You agree with what he just said? That's not what I'm asking him because I don't want him okay, to agree. Okay, go ahead. What I'm telling you is, why is it crazy that I'm telling you that Drake is Madonna as a musician, as a rapper? <clears throat> um, it's, it's just, it just doesn't connect for me. I don't see the correlation. Why not? I mean, they're both big artists. It's great not just artists. that. 
They're both but, pop artists. Nah, uh-huh, Drake's not a pop artist. Bro. Drake has always been a pop artist. He's not a pop artist. First day. Bro. He's not a pop artist. Yes, he is. He's not. For sure. He's not. His Why numbers may his numbers may his music that. is. His music, no, it's not. Okay, what's his first single? It's the first who? Of what? Of, of his career. Um, I don't remember Hold the song. Best I ever had. What was it? Nah, it was that uh Sprite thing with Lebr- uh that wasn't it the Best I ever had is his first single. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Why is he not a pop artist? I don't see that as pop. I mean, I see it, it's, I, per what we're used to and what we're bred in terms of hip hop, I could see why you said he's that. He's not a hip hop But if you recalibrate your ears to the now, you know what I mean? Because he's so so far in the forefront. That's like saying Kanye shit wasn't, wasn't hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like his shit was alternative it's, it's, for some it's, other it's, shit. It's different though, right? It's, it's okay. What is hip hop? Hip hop is what we know it to be. Street urban culture. Not it's not just street. It always has been. No, you when got backpackers. You backpackers got, are from the street. Uh, not all of them. Yes, like they when are. you go back to, like who? Let's name. Uh, they grew Lupe up in the ghetto. Huh? Lupe. You got yeah. Lupe. Lupe grew up in the ghetto. Yeah, but that's not his music though. That's you're missing. Not what he you're missing. About. You're missing. It's not. See, there's a problem. When we say street urban culture, right? Mm-hmm. We talking about densely populated, crime ridden communities. It didn't just birth all criminals. Most people in the ghetto are not criminals. Right. But the music spawns the same language. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. The community spawns the same language, Mm -hmm. spawns the same lifestyles, spawns all the same exact upbringing as anybody else. That's a criminal. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. We all talk the same. So it is only street urban culture. Yeah, but we don't have the same conversation and understanding, though. You know, because you got so many people that come out the hood. Everybody ain't talking about street shit. You see what I'm saying? but, But that's not... Of course you so talk hip hop can be what I'm saying is even in hip hop you have subgenres you know what yeah, I but mean they, but, have, they, but they still all are birthed out of street no urban this is true culture. I'm not debating that so if yeah. you're not from street urban culture you're not a hip hop artist you have hip hop artists that are from the suburbs they're not hip hop artists but they are they do hip hop music no they what is hip hop music you just said it's street urban culture so then Eminem how, ain't from the fucking street, of course he is but he do hip hop. No, that's not. He is from street urban culture. He's not from some wealthy community, middle class community. No, but I'm saying in street in the context of what we, when you say street urban culture, you mean streets, right? Yeah, but see now you see where you're getting wrong at right mm-hmm. now. You're thinking about it. In the back of your mind, streets has never just been exclusively for black people. That's true. Like there were streets way before us. There's streets outside so of us. So we have to define streets. Street is this. Because maybe populated. I'm connecting streets with criminality. But it's crime exists. Yeah. Crime is high, densely populated, highly crime written communities. Okay. But that doesn't mean that the music, you know, totally translates agree. to that though. But but the culture itself is from that. That's where I you agree. get the lingo from. I agree. Bad education programs. But all hip hop isn't street though. But it's from the streets. This is true. But, so can you agree with me? I agree with you. Yeah, I am. But okay. that's what I'm telling you. Right. Either way, Drake is neither one. Drake is a middle class that grew up in a middle class community and a Jewish community, grew up in a Jewish experience in but Canada. But he still does hip hop though. No, he doesn't. Okay. He just he just literally does what Madonna does. He colonizes sounds and ideas. How's he a colonizer? He's from the culture though. No, he's, he's not. Still, he's still black. He's not from the culture. Just because you're black, black don't mean you're from the culture. He spent time in Memphis, so that don't So count. he So every white person that spent time in Memphis is from the He's not the white. Ghetto. He's Jewish. No, he's black. His daddy black as shit. Yeah, what but he about? didn't grow up with his daddy or his daddy ain't where it he don't matter. His daddy daddy's from. DNA is still in him. No. He's still black. And you know, like I know, but, you but get being a black, but being, black but being, in you, you but black. Being, but being black don't also make you the culture. That's true. So you can't stop. You got to stop handing this shit over to people because they start to colonize it. And then- But are we handing it over or did he earn it? He didn't earn anything. He's he literally sold a bunch of records. How he's he a fantastic musician. Exactly. Why does he have so to be? He any, it. So, but he's a pop musician. That's fantastic. Why do you feel pop. necessary? He can make pop records, but I don't think he's a pop artist. Of course, we we just proved it. How we, we just agree. It? You we just said he's not from street urban condition. You said he visited. <laughs> Here he spent some. time in Memphis in the summers, <laughs> so that made he one of them. Yeah, that, just because some some man spent time. But you act like Toronto me. ain't got no no. He's no. not from it. I mean, Toronto. He's is not rough from up there. it. They got knives and everything. Toronto is horrible. Some of the worst things in the world I see happening in Toronto. But he's not from there. <laughs> L.A. got some of the worst shit in the world. But in all fairness, saw. Drake don't make. He he don't misrepresent himself. Of course he does. No, he don't. Yes, he, he does. Well, you didn't say Drake said he just stepped on something. A million times he got songs about spending the block on singles. Man, that's metaphorically. That's just lingo. It ain't, no, that's you not taking it, him. He's saying it first. That's person. you not taking him serious. 
fuck no, I don't take him serious. That's but the that problem. That don't mean that he ain't doing hip hop though. It does. He's so not I'm doing supposed to take every nigga that say what they saying on tape serious. That's what hip hop is all about. I bet you. Uh, no. If See, you was in Kansas agree City, with that. I don't you agree from with Kansas that, bro. City, right? You in Kansas City, you back in Kansas City. Yeah. And a nigga say, man, Court, you talking that bullshit. I'll knock you out. I don't give a fuck how light skinned the Jewish he is. You taking that serious. Oh, yeah. If you say it to me. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking about said to you, said to somebody so, else. So you think that what a nigga rap about, he should be doing and it should be. It's not, it's not what I'm saying. It's okay. not what I'm saying. I'm telling you. Where we talk, where we grew up, because our yep. ghettos is the same, yep. especially our ghettos. That's right. We take all that shit serious. That's right. Unless we know you not serious. Mm -hmm. And we know he's not serious. That's not a shame to him. He's a but pop star. But that don't star. mean that he still can't do great music and do I didn't say he don't music. do great music. He don't do hip hop So because music. he's not... Oh, you, 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 Why can't he just be a pop star that's a fantastic rapper? What if... All right, so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to hear it. What if you have someone not like Drake? This is a hypothetical because I don't even know one that exists from the suburbs that can rap his ass off and starts rapping. Is he a rapper at that point? Yeah, Which, rap, rap, rap is pop at this point. Rap has, but went. you would still you wouldn't call him a hip hop artist. No, you would say that's still a pop. Yeah. Even if he's not singing, because Drake sing, which I mean, that's not what I I'm think that makes about, it yeah. convoluted. No, so but, maybe it's rap and not hip hop. Yes. Okay, so pop is very different though. No, but he's a pop. Rapper, he's always used pop. Everything about his brand is always been music popular. man. EP, mm -hmm. what 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 do you think? I think I think he's pop, and meaning popular music doesn't mm -hmm. mean he has to come from mm -hmm. from yeah. the core. He he doesn't mm -hmm. carry the yeah. burden of culture. He he's not he's not expected to represent. That's okay. what make hit. That's the cornerstone. If I buy. even for people who not criminal, you got to represent. Mm -hmm. Everybody got, oh, you from where we from? You for Eminem got to represent. And this is my point. Punk rock, hip hop, same, they step brothers. Mm -hmm. Same exact father. Poverty, oppression, all the things that create that culture that we use all over. Different mothers, different places on the earth. Punk rock been hip hop step brother the whole time. Mm -hmm. Same father, different mothers. Gotcha. So Eminem is from the same type of poverty. Same type of thing. It don't. I don't know if Eminem ever stole a stick of gum in his life. Yeah. But that don't change that. That's where that attitude and that anger come from. That fuse hip hop or the creativity that we use to make it work. Mm -hmm. It's. I'm not. I've said this multiple times. It's not a diss towards Drake. Drake mm -hmm. is fucking fantastic. No, I get it. So yeah. is Madonna. Yeah, Madonna. They do is the. Dope. They, they are. do the yeah. exact same thing. They take. They can take any style of music, colonize it, and make it a pop song. So is Lil Wayne pop? No, Lil Wayne is from the worst parts ever of fucking New but Orleans. But he still make this, he make the same type of music. No, he doesn't. He make hit records, popular records, right? It's not just Drake makes popular records. That's mm -hmm. that's not what I'm saying. Drake doesn't have the burden of any culture at all. He don't even have to use the same lingo. Okay. Like Lil Wayne is forced to sound like a nigga from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Like if he sounded like a nigga from California, <laughs> it just not gonna. We gonna yeah. be like, no, sir. Yeah. So again, carrying the burden of culture is the cornerstone of hip hop. I got you. Like if Thug, Thug was talking, I saw an interview with Thug before he got locked up. This was a while ago when Mike Brown got killed. Mm -hmm. He was on the red carpet. He had on his jury. Oh, yeah. He had his jury on. And it was like, yeah, so you know, how do you feel about the injustice going on in that. Missouri, right? He was like, man, I don't care about that shit, yeah. man. We out here rocking jury, getting money, fucking bitches, blah, blah. Yeah. Man, niggas tow his ass up. That's right. That's right. Because you are, for nigga Drake <laughs> won't have to say nothing. Because don't nobody expect him to represent because he nobody ever expected him to. Okay. Right I now. That. I dig that. Yeah. I agree with you. Yes and no. So I'm let's saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the album EP. So yeah. I you know, you did all the production, right? Every bit of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So talk about that, that whole journey and how y'all man the, the your journey, approach for that. Yeah, my approach to that, man. Me and G met probably around 07. Mm -hmm. I was executive producing uh uh the homies bones uh, bastards of the bastards party. of the party soundtrack oh, and, okay and yeah. he introduced me to glasses great documentary by the way thank Fucking you man fantastic. yeah, yeah. If, if yeah. no one's seen it, it yeah amazing body. amazing body yep. um so he introduced me to glasses to to feature on the album mm -hmm. so he was introducing and bringing suggestions to who should be on the records and g gave me a record that was amazing um and, and it had he referenced a hook, um, waiting on the world, waiting for the world to change, which was a, uh, um, 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 what's the name reference? Uh, what's the name? I'm John Mayer. John Mayer. Yeah. Change. And I, I'm, I love all genres of music, so I was like, this one stuck out to me. So, 
Um, long story short, I met G and we've been rocking. Uh, we've been doing favors for each other forever. Like he he get a record, he need me to play some stuff on or add different instruments on, and I would do it. And and we always talked about doing this project together. And then the time just came this last couple of years and just dove in, man. And um, it's been a it's been a great experience. Okay. Um, because. And we come from the same city, so that it's it means a little bit different, Watts. you know. Both it's, from it's Watts, both from Watts, yeah. but um, he's a professional. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we just sent ideas back and forth, and we got it done without. A lot with, of with, times, though, yeah, we ease. send ideas yeah. back. Yeah, does a it lot have, of times. Does it have the classic LA sound? Or it does. Is that, different? that was on purpose, and okay. I do a lot of different um, genres of music, mm -hmm. but for this particular body of work, like that was the emphasis, like. Let's make this authentic, mm -hmm. but let's like I, I get off on on, on evolving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It can be L.A., but it it still has to evolve. Right. So it was my job as a producer to bring to make the music evolve, mm -hmm. and it was his job as an MC to be true to to the mm -hmm. culture and what's going on today. And and when both of those collided, I think we have a classic album. So what's the process of cooking up a song? So do you, is it starts with a, the beat? Does it start with a chorus? Does it start with a bar, an idea? Yeah, four different, five yeah. different ways. Yeah, no particular way. Okay. So um, like uh, one record could be like, uh, Kanye should have never married that bitch. That started with the hook. Mm -hmm. um, Joey put his verse on it first, mm -hmm. but we had the hook first. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Lope songs, he talking about featuring Big while I used the big hook and stuff. Mm -hmm. We that we had the whole song done forever before we figured out the hook. The hook mm -hmm. was the last thing we figured out. Mm -hmm. um, I could call him in the morning and be like, "Y'all got an idea for a song? You ever uh, fuck with this break?" And it'd be like Candy from Cameo. You're like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm gonna update it." Mm -hmm. And then I'll just send him back the record. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> as being a pro for 15 years, you know what I mean, and like I'm at my best years. Like I'm finna have my best, the best years of my career at this point. Um, how many ways I can approach making a record, you know what I mean, when it's time, is almost, it might be like nine, 10 ways of entry. I could watch a movie and turn yeah. it into a fucking record. I could right. look at a song, I could look at something that happened with, you know, a gang member and, and mm -hmm. you know, one of the most famous rappers at the time and make a story out of it. Mm -hmm. My approach to making a record is like, I, being around Lil Wayne really changed me. Right. You know what I mean? It forced me, it backed me up into a corner, you know what I mean, as a as an MC, as a record maker. And I had to really go back to the drawing board to get much better because um I always tell I told EP this, like, before I signed the cash money, man, I was a I thought gang was an A plus artist. I was a B minus artist. That's what I thought. I had only been rapping four or five years, and I thought I was a B minus rapper, and gang was an A plus rapper. It wasn't until I signed Cash Money and started watching Lil Wayne in the studio that I realized Wayne is an A plus, Game is a B minus, and I was a D. Damn. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that type of shit will break you. Yeah. So I've I been there. spent a yeah. lot of time, you know what I mean, figuring out where I was going to be great at, why was I great innately, and what I needed to showcase of my greatness. Mm -hmm. And I ran an EP when it all kind of came together. Mm -hmm. I, I, me and EP met way before that when it was mm -hmm. in pieces. Like, mm -hmm. Like he, the record he's talking about, just waiting, right? Is I could see what needed to happen, but I didn't know how to make it always happen. Mm -hmm. That one, he gave me the right music, and I was able to make it happen. Nice. After that, you know, I had to start trying to figure out ways. Sometimes I didn't understand how to, and it took time, a good eight, nine years of studying. But when we finally ran back into each other and decided we was going to do this, yeah, I had figured out how to be a professional MC and a record maker. Mm -hmm. Like before, I always considered myself a professional street nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was that I was robbing the rap game. In 2019, right when I put out Tupac Must Die, that's the day I truly entered hip hop and became a professional hip hop artist. Mm -hmm. Now I consider myself. Now I don't even that street nigga shit. Yeah. You niggas they can have it. I already mastered that. Yeah, like yeah. I, as much as you can master, because you never yeah. master that shit is mm -hmm. you fuck where I get shot tomorrow. But you know what I'm saying? Like I, I know what that look like. Yeah. This right here, oh, I want this. Yeah. Now you didn't feel like you had arrived and was professional once you did that cash money. Deal? No, hell no. Really? I was robbing a bank. Okay, it was a lick. Yeah. Well, not a lick. It was like I didn't know what to expect. And mm -hmm. Birdman was dope. Mm -hmm. He he cultivated me. I was such a great businessman at that time. Mm -hmm. Like I was really like I had my own insurance spot before I started rapping. So I brought that same mentality with me into hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I know. I was taught by my older homies how to run 
you know, drug businesses. Yeah. I know how, and right. I'm articulate. I don't drink and smoke, so I'm right. always conscious. Like I get it. I know how to do this street thing, and I know how to make it work. But them records, when Birdman would put me in position, because he did a fantastic job of giving me an opportunity. I hear a lot of bullshit about Stunner. I can't agree with none of that. That nigga has done everything he could to give me the best opportunities. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know, and I couldn't make up my part. Mm. Where you feel like you dropped the ball? I couldn't make records. Oh, you couldn't make hit records? Just records. And uh -huh. Like, let's even remove the term hit. Let's okay. just say it, just a good ass fucking record. Wow. You why, know what why, I mean? why, why do you think that was? Was it that was it the production that you or you just didn't know how you weren't developed? So it is a combination of production, right? Because mm -hmm. a great producer, like you don't gotta know how to make a hit record if you with Swiss Beats. Mm -hmm. Cassidy is a perfect example. Swiss Beats is gonna go to fucking work. Yeah, and it's a difference mm -hmm. between a person making a beat and a producer and yeah, being produced. That know how to produce yeah, records. And pr produce you as well. And records. So mm -hmm. You know, so yes, there's some, you know, Manny Fresh wasn't there anymore and he mm -hmm. was like a record maker. Right. You know what I mean? For cash money. But mm -hmm. you still, it's still your job if nobody else is here. If I got the bank here, if I got the business here mm -hmm. and he's giving me, it was an endless opportunity. I right. can go find the motherfucker and he'd be like, yeah, I'll write the check. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I look at it, I size it up. The West Coast was in a funky place at the time. It yeah. wasn't. Really, a lot of people, mm -hmm. Mustard hadn't came out. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't me. He didn't know each other, but we was trying to figure out the sound. Dre wasn't doing it. Cat wasn't doing it. Mm -hmm. Warren was kind of, I'm not sure. Like, I was talking to him, but it wasn't like, hey, here goes some beats. Right. Quick, you know, I went and sat with him. It wasn't like the beats was yeah. handed to me. So the guys who had been responsible for making the records on the West Coast for the last 20 years before when I got in the business mm -hmm. were not necessarily the most forthcoming motherfuckers with records. Mm -hmm. So it was on me. So... There's no excuse. I could never blame Warren because if I would have knew that I needed Warren or E or Quick, they couldn't have got away from me. Mm -hmm. the, the, the beginning of this project came together out of frustration for me because um, G introduced me to an to a a r who wanted me to give him a pack of beats that was West Coast driven, right? And at this time, I'm working on tech albums and, and a bunch of different Genres of albums, oh, really right? successful yeah. artists. So, oh yeah, he produced a lot of stuff on tech. Reduced yeah. the singles off the last tech album. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh nice. Yeah, man. So um, G G introduced me to this dude. So he's like, man, I need a pack. So I'm like, all right, I'll get to it. He hit me a couple of times. So I don't like to tell somebody I'm gonna do something. And I do it. So I I didn't have no West Coast kind of ratchet music mm -hmm. up tempo. So I was like, all right, let me break down and I will spend this whole week and I'll make a whole okay. pack. Um, got in contact with the dude. I'm not even gonna name his name, but I had maybe 20 beats I made. He he set up a meeting with me and and it was the day that he was supposed to come. Two or three days before that, okay, I, I'll meet you on Friday. I'll meet you on Friday. And it wasn't until I sent him my address mm -hmm. that he's like, um, can you just send them? Like, bro, it's cool over here, just come. Yeah. I made these all week, yeah. right? He wouldn't come. So I, I I got frustrated and I said, "Hey G, I'm gonna send you all these beats and and the majority of these beats that are on this album that is on this classic album, I'm mm -hmm. gonna say, um, started from from him not showing up. Nice for that okay. body of work. So so you're doing it independent, right? Yeah. yeah. So what's the rollout? What's you know? It's a long journey. Yeah. yeah. When you independent, you gotta take the long. What do you say? Right. The long ride, yeah. boss. Yeah. It's the long ride. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, Really, we just gave the records time to live at yeah. this point, yeah. you know, people to enjoy it. And, and we've been getting good responses. So we know we have a great product. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. another thing that yeah. accidentally happened because mm -hmm. I wanted to do a lot more stuff to start, mm -hmm. but things permitted, stopped me. You know, it wouldn't permit me to. So like um, we, the music has been getting out and all of my original audience is getting it. And they like, yo, this shit is good. Like Scarface text me, hey, this shit. Ice T, that shit, mm -hmm. feel me different, Nick, that shit, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, we got a product. So now let's go into market, right? We're going to mm -hmm. go right into promotion, content, more content, mm -hmm. you know, um, yep. validating the brand, validating the product. Right. All right. Next thing is publicity. Final thing is advertisement. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a 90, I wanted it to be a 90 day plan, but it looked closer to 120. Yeah. We want to yeah. be putting out another fucking album to probably February. I mean, listen, bro, you know, sometimes it take, you know, they people work records for a year. 
year and a half for him to mm-hmm. really yeah. take and get legs and do yeah. what it's gonna do. So, yeah. what's the second single? Uh, I don't think we really looked at it like that. Fine, okay. I don't think we really looked at it like that. Really? Court, nah, cause like we really all this shit go. Mm-hmm. I mean, whatever well, I'm anybody want to play. Video though, I'm saying. Oh, okay. So we yeah, did yeah. some for bitches first, then we right. did tour second. Okay. And the loc is dropping in, in, in any any day now. Nice, nice. And then, but we we're probably doing like I think it's eight videos, eight mm-hmm. to nine videos. Okay. We got yeah. a ton of content. Okay. Uh, we going to a dope publicity run coming yeah. up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you this got a month, big next one, month. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a nice look. You know what I'm saying? So that's a nice. Look. I'm just trying to go bigger than that. Like yeah. I need to really be on the news. Nah, this I mean shit, you big right now. You know, what yeah, saying? but I need to right go. Here. I'm saying right here. Oh, this is no, big fucking town. This is the best, right? yeah, yeah, but it's dope because <laughs> even before I had the album, we was talking about doing it. What's funny is I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna wait till I get my album out. Yeah, we come up here to just <laughs> shit. I'll be on this yeah. platform. We we'll yeah, go yeah, market yeah, shit. Yeah, but uh, now nah, I really want to be on. I mean, what's the biggest shit new? I need to be on CNN talking this shit. This cribbing. Man, listen, bro. You got Holding Court podcast. You got Gangster Chronicles, nigga. Yeah. You, you lit. Hands down. You but lit. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to. I need to sit down with like the leader of the KKK <laughs> and see if I could actually broker a peace treaty. Like this, one I'm at in my life. We don't want peace with them <laughs> niggas, man. I know, but it just would be cool to act like it could happen. <laughs> I need to walk just in for the door. conversation. Yeah. Why just you hate niggas? <laughs> <laughs> You know, see, I need to, I need to. Why you hate niggas? Why you hate niggas, bro? I want to be like, you know, I really like y'all, man. But, but now nah, I'm I'm really looking for really one thing I always put in I always I always push and, and push to Joey and put into to the universe with EP mm-hmm. is like I was pushing you before we started this yeah. podcast. We don't have to play by no rules. I got you. Yeah. Like none. Yeah. None, cuz. I mean, listen, bro, you you are, you know, you autonomous at this point. You ain't, you know, you can do it your way. Right. And really in today's time, there is no wrong way. Right. It happens differently for everybody, you and, know what I'm but saying? But we still do everything everybody else doing. Yeah. But we do other shit but you too. You do it your way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. I you get know, it. Man, it's like, working for you. It's been working for yeah, you, you know. But but I think we could do some shit. Yeah. I think it's just like I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm we in such a world, dog, to where I could do anything. Yeah. And I don't think I tell Steel sometimes I don't think he really believe it, but we could do anything. Shout we could to make a homie fucking Steel. TV show, a fucking movie right now by ourselves. Yeah. With a fucking phone. What up, Steel? Where's I don't Steel? know where that motherfucker is. Like he limped gone? out here somewhere. Oh yeah. shit, nigga went home. He hey, gone. but shit, man, I appreciate y'all coming, Thank bro. You, for having me. you know, man, I've been trying to get you on here. And one thing I want to say, Glass, I want to give you your flowers too, bro. Because oh, one you, thing man. I can say at least from my vantage point. Nigga, your name has always been smut free. And it amazes me the motherfuckers that you know and people be talking about glasses. I be like, I hear it, like be big celebrities mm-hmm. and shit like that. Yeah. Like, you know glasses? Still be yeah. saying that shit, it blowing like, me Yeah, fucking glasses yeah. is my man. I'm like, damn, <laughs> it, it, okay. <laughs> what's funny is if I can get the everyday person to feel how some of their favorite people feel, <laughs> yeah. I always tell Joe, you be in the game, like if, you know, it's, it's one thing to impress Dr. Dre or Scarface. It's another yeah. thing to impress Tom that work at 7 Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Tom don't know shit. Tom, like, you all right. But, but Dr. Dre, like, you dope. What's dope is you have the respect of your peers, you know, and your peers are, you know, on the totem yeah, pole, ladies, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, man, we got to give you your flowers and you That's too, right. brother. Thank I didn't you, know brother. you was as accomplished as you are. Thank you, know you man. I forgot Thanks Grammys for and all that, nigga, though. It's always like man. that for watch niggas, man. Watch niggas don't get no That's just what watch niggas yeah. do. Watch niggas just get it done. Here, Barry, shout out to Barry yeah. White. Shout out yeah. to Patrice yeah. Russell. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the Whispers. Shout out to Tyrese. Black Tie. Black Tie make it work, though. The Whispers, the Silvers. All that. Platters. Rolls Royce. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Rolls Royce from that too? Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. Patrice Russian went to lock. Every time I think about the silvers, I think about DOC. It's getting funky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that yeah sample for exactly. Uh, but, uh, Patrice Russian went to Yeah, man, appreciate y'all coming, bro. You know you're okay. welcome here anytime. We'll Thanks be back. Having us, man. You know, we will be if back. If I can be of any service for the movement, hey, don't yeah. hesitate. My you know, man. Let me know I'm here. All right. So, and it's, it's it's a pleasure debating with you, too. Man, man it's fun, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good, so. yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, you know it's coming, right? He's probably the only nigga that's as long-winded and can talk as much as me, and I love it. And that's hard to do. I hope I share facts in my thoughts. I hope it don't 
would be absolutely. how I feel. Absolutely. Now you'd be on point. Very thought provoking. I've been thinking I, about changing yeah. my name to the honorable glasses look, but hmm. Cam is talking me down. Cam is glad to that shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we out of here, man. Big Core Holding Core Podcast producer Ken E P right. and the man glasses Malone. Y'all go get Jody that out. Already. Salute. <laughs>